At Beijing's National Speed Skating Oval, students are doing their drills. Coach Wu Wanjin is a former national team short track skater. I currently have about 60 to 70 students ranging from 3 to over 70 years old. Prior to the 2022 Beijing Winter Games, this venue was the site of the 2008 Summer Olympics field hockey ground as well as archery range. They were torn down to make way for what it is now, Asia's largest speed skating arena with a capacity of up to 12,000 spectators. For two years it's been open to the public, bringing ice skating to the masses. The games themselves inspired many parents to get their kids into the sport. We are blessed as ordinary citizens to be able to experience skating in such a world-class venue. It brings us great joy. With its new facilities, Beijing aims to grow winter sports into a $100 billion industry by 2025. For Coach Wu, the 2022 Games forged a career path for her to teach her passion. Before the Winter Olympics, there were very few children in Beijing who learned to skate, especially short track speed skating. They all learned figure skating and ice hockey. Afterwards, more and more retired athletes like us came here and everyone's level improved. Although China repurposed several venues when it played host a second time, this skating stadium is one of seven new installations made for the winter edition. Another is Shogang Park. If it looks like the scene of a science fiction movie, it's because for several years it was an abandoned industrial park. Once home to the most advanced steel mill in China and a key contributor to urban smog, factories were relocated before the Summer Olympics to battle pollution. Not until a decade later was it earmarked for the Winter Games. Do Guanglu is an architect and was part of the team that designed the big air stadium and surrounding areas. When we came, it was in the summer. We heard the cicadas and birds and other small animals. It was a strange feeling to have at an industrial site. There was this ecological contrast, which was very interesting. At the time, there were a lot of photography enthusiasts in Beijing who liked coming. The Shogang project was billed as a rebirth, highlighting the city's industrial past and built to last. People from Beijing don't just come to see the ramp and leave. If you look around at the people right now, they think it's a great environment. They like to come here for a walk and typically come for a picnic or a stroll. The ramp has become a part of the landscape. The world's first and only permanent big air jump sits empty, though, for months at a time. Despite this, some say such venues have had a positive impact. The Beijing Olympic Games 2022 has utilized a lot of policies and approaches to ensure 100% renewable energy use for all of the venues. We also noticed that there are a lot of new technologies and facilities used in this, uh, um, in this game, uh, not only uh, to fulfill, used to fulfill its uh, sustainable goal of the game, but also uh, survive and uh, support the uh, green development of the region. But there have been environmental and sustainability concerns over one particular venue. Situated 90 kilometers northwest of Beijing, the site of the Alpine events was torn out of what was a core area of a protected nature reserve with little to no snow. The Yanqing Alpine Center requires hundreds of fan-powered snow guns to produce the powder needed to ski. It's a very energy-intensive way to produce such snow in order to just host the game. And it's also uh, could cause um, some uh, pollution problems if that we don't know if there's any uh, chemical uh, aspect, uh, chemical elements within the production of the, during the process of uh, production such snow. Environmentalists aren't just concerned about artificial snow. During both the winter and summer games, the Chinese government employed cloud seeding technology which involves dispersing chemicals into the clouds to control when and where it rains and flush out dirty skies. One thing Beijing couldn't control, though, was the political fallout of hosting the international event. In 2022, countries such as the US, the UK and Australia 
staged a diplomatic boycott due to human rights concerns. Whilst Russian President Vladimir Putin travelled to Beijing for the opening ceremony. And so, the Winter Games also became the backdrop of a warming friendship between Beijing and Moscow. It was then when President Xi and Putin signed their No Limits partnership deal, just weeks before Moscow launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine.